Uh, my name is Nelson George. I'm an author and a filmmaker. Well, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, uh, from areas, a number of area, neighborhoods. Crown Heights is where my family started. My mother and father lived there when they moved here from uh, Virginia uh, in the 50s. Uh, then we moved to an area called Brownsville, which is, uh, was notorious for years and years as the home of Murder Incorporated. That's where the, the real tough Jews come from, the, uh, a lot of the biggest uh, Jewish gangsters of the 30s and 40s into the 50s lived there. And uh, we were part of the wave of black and Latino um, sort of immigrants from the South and from Puerto Rico who moved there. And uh, so I, I grew up in this area that, which was, that has echoes of, Jew, of Jewish, and, and there's temples and there's streets and there's institutions that go back to the 30s, tenement buildings. Um, Alfred Kazin wrote a book called Walker in the City, which is actually about Brownsville. And it's kind of about Brownsville as it was becoming, it was a Jewish ghetto, then it became a black and Hispanic ghetto. And we lived in um, some great society housing projects that were built during the 60s uh, under Kennedy and Johnson. And we lived there more or less into the 70s. Then we moved into an area called East New York, which is farther out um, toward uh, Jamaica Bay. And we kind of were part of a group of uh, folks who, uh, I always say we chased the white folks out of, out of Brooklyn. Because we were, every neighborhood we lived in were basically, had been either a Jewish or Italian neighborhood, pretty much. And uh, by the time I, you know, I'd been there three years, they'd all basically left. Uh, or going to Long Island or Florida or wherever people went back then. So uh, that's my background. I'm, I'm a very much a Brooklyn guy. I live now, I've lived in Fort Greene, Brooklyn for over most of my adult life now, I would say I moved there in 84, maybe, late 84, 85. So I've lived in Fort Greene when that was kind of a dodgy area. Uh, then it became a kind of a black arts area where Spike uh, lived around the corner from me, Spike Lee. Uh, tons of musicians from, the, from Lester Bowie and the World Saxophone Quartet guys to Vernon Reed. Uh, to just tons of artists and painters and designers. And that's sort of in my area since then now it's become uh, an incredibly gentrified area. Um, and in fact, Fort Greene has probably changed more. I've lived there since 84, let's say. So it's probably changed more in the last three to four years than it had in the previous 20. So all those things shaped me. It's something you have to have very mixed feelings about. One thing I liked about Fort Greene was that it was predominantly a black neighborhood that had white people in it. So it wasn't like living where I grew up in the projects where it was basically just working class to poor folks. It had a really nice mix of working class people from the projects, black homeowners, white homeowners, uh, had BAMs in that neighborhood has been there forever. So you had arts institutions there. And the area always had a very artsy vibe. I mean, they were... Uh, the first time I saw Erica Badu in Most Deaf was at a poetry spot on Fulton Street. So it had that kind of, it had at least, I witnessed at least two to three generations of black artists who lived there. And now that's, those folks have either made a ton of money and moved out or have been replaced by younger black, black artists. But now you have a, a white presence. Like we used to have sort of older homeowners who lived in the neighborhood. Now we have, it's a, you know, all the people who, who, couldn't have, who got chased out of Chelsea and chased out of Lower East Side and chased out of uh, Manhattan are there because you can live in Fort Greene and have access to the city. I'm at most, depending on the subway, three subway stops from Lower Manhattan. Uh, and you have a great park. And you have BAM and you have a number of great cultural institutions. So I, I'm, I'm, I, I like the fact that gentrification has brought in more restaurants. I mean, we always used to say there was only like three places to really eat in a neighborhood. Now... We have about five French bistros and uh, Mexican and you name it. We have, you know, you can actually spend your entire weekend in Fort Greene, the Fort Greene area, and go to movies, go to plays, go to jazz, go to a club, have great food, go shopping. Uh, but that definitely has been a cost. Uh, the neighborhood is, is beginning to resemble aesthetically more the, not even the village, but like the Upper West Side. We're having a, a, an incredible expansion of skyscrapers into a brownstone neighborhood is like out of my bedroom I can see two being built um, and there's a lot lot more coming
So I think that the neighborhood that I loved is being changed by gentrification profoundly, just as the city is. And the, the bottom line is that uh, Giuliani sort of uh, made the city safer along with Bratton and, and that whole strategy. Um, Bloomberg has made the city safe for real estate developers. And so uh, places like Fort Greene, even places in South Bronx, you go all over the city, there's probably more big buildings being built in Manhattan and in Bronx and Brooklyn, Queens than there's been, again, in my lifetime, just so much development, which is driving out not just, you know, middle to lower income people, but also driving out the businesses that support them. So I don't know where someone on the West Side gets their, their shoes shined or, you know, the laundry or the, uh, you know, watchmaker. There's all those little craft shops that, that died at the city, little businesses that supported residential neighborhoods. And now you have these skyscrapers, these, these little buildings, you know, get your keys made. I don't know where you get your keys made. You know, there's things like that that are very simple parts of life. But find, when you don't have them, you suddenly realize how essential the key maker is and the shoemaker is, or the shoe fixer is, more importantly. And, and those things are being pushed out of the city. And so we have this really weird, we have people with lots and lots of money and lots and lots of skyscrapers and not actually, and lots of lots of restaurants. But every other kind of service to, 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 that's important to living a, a good life is kind of being chased out of town by real estate.